everyone. Today I wish to share with you um, my labor and delivery story. So my due date was February 12th, 2018, and it was a Monday morning, and I woke up that morning, and I was having contractions. So I started to time them, and they were five minutes apart, lasting for a minute. And this went on for about an hour. To, it actually went on for two hours. So normally when you're at 511, you may start to head to the hospital. But I'd already talked with my doctor, and because we were so close to the hospital, he said, don't even bother coming in until you're 311. So I was at home waiting, and my husband um, woke up with me, and when I told him what was going on, decided that he would call in for his work, and we would stay. So it went on for about two hours at 511. And then they started to get further apart. So we got up and we tried everything. We went out for a long walk. Um, we went and I had really spicy Thai food, like extremely spicy food. And But unfortunately, they stopped. They petered out. And that was a little devastating because I just, I got so excited thinking that yes, today was the day. And so we just continued over the next few days trying it all. The spicy foods. I walked everywhere. I did so much walking. On the day, there was a day where it got it was really, really cold and icy and I couldn't go outside. And so my husband set up the Wii Fit. Um, you, he set up the Wii Fit for me and I got on it. And if you have a Wii Fit, you know it keeps track of your weight. And you have a little me person that you create that's your little avatar. And it actually changes based on what your weight is. And so you get, I get on and I haven't been on in over a thousand days and my little me becomes obese and they just went woo. So that was a little discouraging and made me really angry at the Wii. But anyway, so we did the Wii Fit, did the walking, had sex, did birthing ball exercises, moving around. Um, I had been drinking raspberry tea since about 30 weeks and just upped all the raspberry tea. I think we tried everything. The only thing I didn't try was eating a pineapple and eating its core. Um, but I went on all week. I would have a contraction like here or there, but nothing like at all consistent. It'd be like one and then there'd be hours before another would come. Um, so Thursday came along and I had my next prenatal appointment. So I went in and talked with the doctor and I was the same dilation as the week before, so it didn't seem like much was changing, so they wanted to come up with a plan, what the plan was going to be. They wanted to know if, with Monday being a holiday, if they just wanted me to go to the hospital and be induced on Monday, or wait till Tuesday where I could then go have an ultrasound, then come back to the clinic, discuss how that ultrasound would go, and then base on that on that ultrasound, we would pick an induction date between Tuesday and Thursday. So over those two options, for some reason, putting a date on it, I was like, Monday seems too soon. <laughs> I could not wait to get this baby out of me, but the moment they were like, so how about come in, how we about we do Monday for an induction? I was like, too soon, we'll wait for Tuesday. Plus, I had an appointment the next day to try acupuncture for an induction as well. And I really wanted to give that a try. So we made the decision that I would go and have an ultrasound. And as long as the ultrasound was good, um, we, would, we could wait until the latest of Thursday for it. So that night, I had my prenatal classes. And my prenatal classes are actually... Um, prenatal and postnatal classes. So they do it all together. You have so many weeks before and after. So my classes actually go all the way to March 15th. And that week was the first week we actually had people bringing in their babies. People had had babies the previous week and we got to see them. So I was excited, went there, found a baby, held a baby, was hoping, taking anything to help get those hormones going. It was a really good class. They were so cute. We had two boys and two girls, so that was kind of awesome. Um, so then that night we went home, nothing really going on. I was feeling like cramping a bit, but not contractions. So I was just like, okay, went to sleep. Woke up Friday morning at 5 a.m. to a contraction. Started timing them. 
Now, timed them until about 6.30, and they were kind of all over the place. Some were 12 minutes apart, another was 6 minutes apart, anywhere in between there. So after having the false labor on Monday, um, discussed with my husband and that he would go to work and that I would just keep timing them and I would let him know if and when they decided to actually get closer together and actually start to be consistent. So went through the entire morning, uh, got ready. Um, my my mother-in-law came and picked me up and we went to the acupuncture appointment for 10.30. And my contractions were still going, but again, they were very erratic and they seemed to be, there was some every once in a while that would be like six or seven minutes apart, but for the most part, they seemed to be between 10 and 15 minutes apart. So I was like, this could be the day, but this could also just stop. I wasn't ready yet to like really let myself be excited that I was going to have the baby because of Monday I knew that there was a chance that it could just stop. So I went to my acupuncture appointment to which he explained it could take generally up to three times, three visits, um, to get it going. So I was coming on that Friday, then he said he would be able to see me on the Monday even though it was a holiday, and then the Tuesday as well. So even though I had, I knew I'd have a ultrasound appointment that morning if I was still pregnant, I was hoping that I would at least be able to talk to doctors if I was still pregnant at that point until he had me this last uh, acupuncture done. Um, because the guy I go to, I really like, I really enjoy. He's a great guy, he's a good friend of mine as well. And he so far has a 100% success rate, success rate with um, helping women become induced in a more natural way. So what happened was he placed a bunch of needles in me um, at different parts. There was a couple down on my like feet and ankles. Um, he had a couple in my ears that were supposed to help um, get my cervix to dilate more since I hadn't been dilate I hadn't dilated anything from the week before. And then there were some in my arms as well. And he put one here to help relax. And then he set up, oh, maybe not the arm, I think it was just the hand, yeah, and the thumb here, and then he um, hooked up actually electricity on the right and the left side to it, and I think it was for like a half hour, we sat there with the electricity, had a few contractions while that was going on, but because um, the, the needles and all that, I wasn't able to time them, so I wasn't sure how far apart they were, and again, at this point in time, I was still kind of keeping myself in reserve because I was just like, don't want to get excited if this is just going to go away. So at that, up to that point, they had been about roughly 10, 15 minutes apart. So once the appointment was over, my mother and I, my mother-in-law and I left. We, um, we went to, um, like a baby store and we went to like the Goodwill just to have a quick look around. Didn't last very long because my contractions were getting stronger and, but they were still very erratic, not anywhere in any sort of timing as well, at all. So we decided at that point that we would go for lunch and we were gonna go for lunch up where by my acupuncturist was, but decided that just in case my contractions decided to suddenly get themselves closer together since they seem to be getting stronger, that maybe we should have lunch closer to my end, my place, since my place was really close to the hospital. So we came back went for lunch and then I went to Walmart to pick up a few things the um, last minute things that I had wanted at home and my contractions are about between six and ten minutes apart I believe at this point and I was like okay so my mother-in-law though had to go to work so she left and I basically filled up the bath I think at that point yeah I filled up the bath and I stayed in that bath for as long as humanly possible um, and for the next like couple hours they were just again very kind of erratic but getting stronger and it finally got to the point where just laying down my back was not doing it but they were starting to get closer but they were still very erratic they'd be anywhere from like three minutes apart to like six minutes apart. And 
anywhere in between. So it wasn't quite, wasn't what I was expecting for like that 5-1-1 like I was having on Monday. And wasn't getting down to like the 3-1-1. So I stood up and started to have a shower. My husband was out running a couple errands at the time. And so, but once I stood up and started moving, they started to get really short apart. And they were going anywhere from like two minutes apart to five minutes apart. Which at which point I called my husband and was like, I hope your errands are about 10. I really need, <laughs> we need to get going. <laughs> so he got back and we went to the hospital. We got to the hospital hospital at about seven. And it took a few minutes. There was like one lady in front of us um, when we got there. And so I just kept walking back and forth and they were just the coming. And, but again, not like constant cons, like timing wise, again, between, it was between like two minutes and four minutes at this point, but so, but they were coming. So they admitted us, we went into the triage unit, they checked, I had gone up to four centimeters dilated. I was like, yes, thank you, my, <laughs> thank you, my acupuncturist, Mike. Yes. So um, I was admitted. We went into the labor room, at to which point um, I let family know that we had actually been admitted and had my mother-in-law, who was my second support person, come on in. So she came and was there in, in record timing, found us really fast, actually. So I, I had my husband as well as my mother-in-law um, in the room with me and then the nurse. And so for the first part, the beginning part of being there, it wasn't so bad. I walked around a bit. I tried a few different positionings. I went into the shower and it was pretty, I mean, it was intense, but it was, it was manageable. I did it with a little bit of laughing gas, which I previous, me and my husband had previously discussed, um, our plan going into labor just so you're aware what our plan was, was laughing gas was okay. Narcotics were like the last choice, staying away from an epidural. Did not want an epidural. And one of the reasons why is um, I know I manage pain through movement. And I have known quite a few women who have gone and had an epidural and it hasn't fully taken effect. They can still feel pain on one side or the other, but then they're stuck in bed. And I knew if that happened to me, it it would be awful. So <laughs> I would not be able to process and to handle it. So I just decided I don't want an epidural. So um, for the first, yeah, for the first out couple hours, it was fine moving around. Then they came back to check to see how um, I was dilating and I was still at four centimeters. And I was like, you have to be kidding me. <laughs> so they broke my water and then things began to progress. But this is also when things started to get really hard. Um, because after the water broke, I suddenly had the need, I felt the need to basically poop. And it started off like a little weird. I was like, okay, I kind of feeling this need to poop. This is a little intense. And they're like, oh, that's normal. That just means that things are going along. And I was like, okay, all right. So we keep going and it's getting more and more intense and I hate the sensation of having to poop in the first place and now it's just like all I want to do. And I've been told though, you know, you can't actually push though. Can't do that. So you, you can have that sensation but don't follow the, the actual lead to push. And I was like, okay, this really sucks but okay. And except I wasn't really that calm about it. <laughs> Um, I yell, I was yelling poop quite a bit <laughs> and, um, I was very, getting very angry and frustrated because I couldn't find release. And, um, we finally got to a spot with my husband sitting actually right behind me and I was sitting on his legs where it was manageable for quite a bit. And I was punching the bed as the contractions came and then would lean forward over the back of the bed and rest. And then as they came back up, I would sit back up on him and kind of continue to punch the bed and yell poop a bunch. And yeah, because that apparently was the only thing I could communicate at that time. But the laughing gas started to make me feel nauseous. And so I just kind of stopped using it. 
but could only sit on my husband's legs for so long before they started to fall asleep. So he had to get up and move. And when that happened, it kind of, I kind of had to try and find a new way to position and to be and to manage the pain. And it was just really, really hard. And I was really struggling. And um, I'm not sure at what point during this they went and found out I was about seven centimeters dilated. So it was moving along, but I wasn't there yet. And I was just, I was starting to not know how I was going to continue to keep this going. And so at one point my husband asked if I wanted to get up and move around and I was just in such pain and I was just like, I don't want to move. I have kind of a system here, but so I stayed on the bed. So at some point I, in my mass rambling, because I stopped making sense, I was just asking please and didn't ask anything. I'd be like, please help me, please help me. And my husband would be like, what do you need? I'm like, I don't know, just make this stop. And he's like, I, I can't do that. <laughs> so it was going on and then they offered, I don't know if they offered or if I actually asked, I'd have to ask my husband, but we went and ended up going and getting morphine. So they gave me about a, sh a shot of morphine and cause I just, I wasn't not being able to keep doing this. And so she's like, oh my goodness. And so they checked me and I was like nine centimeters dilated. I was like, Oh my God, so freaking close. And it was just getting so much. And I know at one point they asked if I was going to want an epidural and I was just like, and I had looked at my husband cause I could not even think I could not comprehend. And I was just so out of my head. I was just like, I'm sorry, what, what's the answer to this? And he was like, we don't want an epidural. I was like, no, I don't want an epidural. And I was very thankful to have had him there in that moment that we had made the birth plan and that we had gone over what was okay, what we wanted, and why. And he just reminded me, and I was just like, okay, that's right, no epidural. So, said no, and went, and I was just, though, I was getting so mad. And when they checked again, they're like, oh, you're nine and a half. And I was like, you have to be kidding me. Half a centimeter to go, and they were like, you're so close. And I'm like, can I push? They're like, you, you can't push. I'm like, I want to push. And so... They had me move around a bit because there was just like this one spot that wasn't quite dilated. And so we moved and we did it. And then finally they were like, now it's time to push. And I was like, yes. <laughs> and so for me, at least, once the actual pushing started, I found it much more manageable. Um, I was a little afraid of coming to the pushing part because everyone is like, you know, the ring of fire, it's the most painful part. But for me, now I had something I can actually do and I could concentrate on. And so it was much more manageable for me. So at, I think it was 11.02, I think so, 11.02 or 11.03, I was given the okay to start pushing. And so kept going and I remember it was about at about five to, tw to midnight I looked at the clock and I was like oh my goodness we are so so close they had let me I could feel when I was doing the pushes I could feel my baby's hair it was amazing and it was just so close and I was like is this going to be a Friday baby or is this going to be a Saturday baby like we are so close to the clock and so it went and had a few more pushes and at 11.57, my baby came out. And I was, it was just, it was such a, an amazing release of, of a moment. The baby came out and they put the baby on me. And I didn't know what it was for a moment. And they were like, you have a baby boy. And I was just so, wow. And I was, I was like, did we, and I was looking down at this baby and I'm like, one of the first things in my mind was just like, did we make it? Is it a Friday baby or a Saturday baby? They're like, you got it out in 11.57, at 11.57. So they were, they're like, you did amazing. You only put, we're only pushing for 55 minutes. And uh, most first time moms push for usually around an average of about two and a half hours. So it was a pretty quick delivery process. At some point they had these three people in the room because they brought them in because um, I've had because I had the morphine and because it was so close to when actually the having the baby come out 
it would have, could have still affected the baby. So they had brought them in. I remember hearing them come in. I don't remember seeing them at all. My husband assures me that they were there. But the moment um, my baby came out, he started to cry and move right away. And apparently that was all they needed because they left right at that point and they put my baby on me. And that was my world. <laughs> Suddenly was this little baby that was on me. And so I just was not aware of what was going on outside of that what was going on outside of that. I remember at some point the nurses started pushing on my stomach and then after a few minutes they're like, oh, here comes the placenta. And then things got, I guess, slightly scary. I don't know. Again, my world was this little baby that was on me that was lifting its head and moving it and it was really impressive that it had such great neck control that it could lift and move. But apparently when the placenta came out, I had a hemorrhage. I don't think it was a very big hemorrhage, but I had a hemorrhage. So they had to um, deal with that, and to which point they had to try and find um, a blood vessel so they could get um, a line hooked up to me. And my blood vessels decided they didn't want to um, participate at all. So they poked me in a bunch of different areas, had a hard time getting it. I still have a couple bruises from it, one at the back of my hand where it ended up being. Um, but they got the line in, at which point I remember them saying briefly that next time um, I have a baby just to let them know that this happened so that they can have a line pre-put in because it was most, it would be likely to happen again. So, okay. So besides that, besides the hemorrhage, I also had stage two tearing. And so what that means is, um, so at stage one tearing, all it is is superficial tearing, just of just of like the top layer of skin basically and it's something that you if you have you may not even need any stitches at all and if you do you're only going to need a couple stage two tearing is where it's not just the top surface but also goes in a bit to the muscle as well at this point they have to layer the stitches and so i had stage two tearing you can also have stage three or four tearing which becomes much more se severe and serious so after they had got the line in, they had to freeze me and start stitching me up. And so all the while, I just have this beautiful little baby sitting on me, laying on me, and it is amazing. So after a bit though, after an hour of the baby sitting on me, um, they had to take it off. They have to take my baby off. Um, me and my husband at this point have been discussing names back and forth fourth um because we had had a girl name already picked out if it was a girl uh, we had it for quite a few years but we hadn't picked up a boy's name so we were pulling names out there we were like zachary uh i can't remember what some of the other names were that we were playing with i think it was between zachary and thomas at the time and so we took the baby to go away and to, to, for its length and Thomas, yes, we ended up with Thomas. Thomas was 55 centimeters long, which turned out to be the longest baby that that nurse had, had um, measured so far. They were usually around 52, 53 centimeters. So that was kind of neat. So 55 centimeters long and he weighed 8.18 pounds. So he was a fairly big baby. Not huge, but yeah. So then, after they were done all that, um, it was Richard's turn to be able to hold. And so in our prenatal class, they had talked about um, how the importance of skin to skin, but the hospitals wouldn't allow dads um, to take their shirts off because something had happened in the past and they had to make a rule that um, the, hus the male partners had to keep their shirts on at all times. But if you brought a button up, you could unbutton the shirt and then have the skin to skin. So my husband, who had been in like his bathing suit and that, so he could be in the shower with me and in the earlier part, went and put on his buttoned up shirt. And this is the only part that I'm annoyed about, about my whole labor and delivery is they then took our little baby Thomas and swaddled him in three blankets and then handed him to my husband. But so I was a little annoyed that he wasn't able to do the skin to skin right away. 
but it was amazing watching my husband hold our new baby boy for the first time. And yeah, it was just absolutely amazing. But so Thomas was born at 1157. We didn't get moved over to the new room, to, my, to the uh, postpartum room until about 2.45. <laughs> so it took them quite a bit of time to do, to get between getting the line in and making sure the bleeding had stopped and uh, to get all the stitches done and then to check. Just, yeah, it just, it took quite a bit of time. So it was 2.45 in the morning when they got me moved all over to the postpartum room. And so I was sharing a room, but at the time there was no one there. So I got myself set up all in and about three o'clock my extremely tired husband who had been up since 5 a.m. the previous day with me and had to go to work went home and went to bed before we go though we need to see Thomas so I would like to, for everyone to meet Thomas Aston Groom born Friday February 16th at 11 57 p.m. 8.18 pounds, 55 centimeters long. With all this hair. <laughs> so thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my labor and delivery story. And sometime in this next week, I will be back with my one week update with Thomas. Thank you.